Hello, 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 and welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're taking a look at the Fulcos, careful of the word, Odin 5F3. It's in a very fancy box, and I'm joined with very fancy people. So, one second, I will make sure people can see what we're doing. There we go. We've got Daniel from 3D Makers Hub, and we have Michael, my uh, associate. Uh, you're trying to find batteries for your microphone yeah cool that doesn't feel like something you perhaps should have done i don't know an hour ago but cool they literally ran out like one minute ago okay do you need to go and find them uh no i sent a message oh you sent for the butler have you yeah okay that's gonna go well it's not um, <laughs> right so we are taking hello Delasogas, hello nonstick, hello Martin. Who else have we got on? We've got Ultra Proxy. Hello, hello, Matt German. Hello, sir. Lots and lots of people. Mr. and Mrs. Diesel. How are you guys? So, unlike the previous live stream, which took me, I don't know, a large portion of my life. Hi, Loopy Lou. Uh, a very large portion of my life that I that I miss greatly uh, to assemble. This printer claims that it is 90% pre-assembled. I like these. This may very well be the fanciest box that I have received a 3D printer in. It's very nice. Before we get started, Let's just do a quick rundown of the specs. So this is a 235, 235, 250. So it's the same as an Ender 3. Although, actually, is it a little bit bigger than an Ender 3, Daniel? It just is a wee bit, not much. Yeah, like 5 mil? Yeah, 5 yeah. mil. Which is, definitely a, which is definitely a middle finger out to, <laughs> to reality. There's only, there's only one reason you make it 5 mil bigger on any axis. And that's just to go, yeah, it's slightly bigger than an Ender. Um, we have a 32-bit mainboard. We have 2208 stepper drivers, so it's super silent. We have a touch screen. We have dual drive Z axis. We have direct drive. Um, we also have a glass platform. And and I'm going and because I legally have to say this due to the agreement we made with Focus, um, it is foldable. Cool. We've all been waiting for a foldable printer. You've been crying out for the feature for years. And here we are, finally in 2021. And the printer does fold. Great. So, this is 254 American pesos. Um, and uh, it's not currently available in the UK. But it will be. And when we do it, when it is, we'll be posting um, a review of it. And we'll also be posting the links and everything to the video. Daniel has already received his focus. How have you found it so far, Daniel? Sorry, I'm replying to stuff back in the chat. Um, so me per se, yeah, I have received it. And it has been printing very, very nicely. Um, the fact of the direct drive, I do like, I will say that I haven't spanned into the TPU only due to, uh, work related stuff. Um, but I will say that besides some minor things, what we're probably going to point out today when you unbox yours, um, in all, it's a decent little printer. Um, opening up the bottom is going to be fun to see what is actually inside the machine. Um, I know that if you want a preview for the actual STL, you have to download another program to actually get the preview on the screen. Although it is nice to right. see your STL before it's printed and what you're actually printing. Is it a feature you need? Maybe. I mean, it depends what kind of person you are. So I only ever really have whatever I'm currently printing on my SD card at once. But right. Mike, I know that you like 
you like to queue stuff up, don't you? So you like to have like five or six things sliced on the card so that you can just get the thing off the bed and then bang the next thing on. Uh, so if you're talking, we can't hear you. So your battery has definitely gone flat. Yep, yeah, cool. All right, fair enough. So Mike's now a ghost who can't talk to us and we'll have to uh, come, come through to us as some sort of medium. That'd be fun. Okay, so without further ado, before we move on, this is EO filament. This is what we'll be using to print today. Um, it's a nice PLA. We've got a contact in the UK who sells it. Um, it's just printing really nicely on all our machines, and it's all I have in the office at the moment. So please remember to like and subscribe, and I will now... Well, that's not going to work, is it? Let's pull that up. There we go. And now we are going to open up this box, which is easier said than done. I mean, we put a lot of tape on it. Oh my God. We put a lot of tape on it. So it's worthwhile noting, as I said, this is not currently available in the UK. Um, we actually had to get uh, Full Coast to send this over to Daniel, and Daniel posted it over to us. Uh, he has stressed on multiple times that he hates going to the post office. It's full of terrible people and he hates all the people who work there. Um, they ask him very awkward questions about his 3D printers that he doesn't like. I think last time they were just they were just staring at you as if to go, I bet you 3D print guns. Well, no, it was more the fact that like they it's this time around. I got a younger kid and he's like, you're sending this off. And I'm like, yeah, I got a bunch at home, and I have to send it to my buddy over in the UK. He's like, yeah, how much is he paying for it? And I'm like, that's none of your business. Oh how much was shipping? Quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> so a it, was bit. About, it was about $120 uh, to ship, I think. Um, so one thing I will say before, uh, before we crack on. The machine was sent to us by uh, by Fulcos uh, 3D. If they uh, is it Fulcos 3? It's not Fulcos 3D. It's just Fulcos. Yeah, it was sent to us by Fulcos, um, and uh, no money changed hands. The opinions and everything that we say in here are our own. Certainly, trying to give Daniel any other opinion than his own is completely impossible. So you'll very least know that his opinion's real. Um, we don't get paid to do any of these. At best, we get to keep the machines. In this case, we get to keep this machine. Um, we're, not, we're not like the larger channels in the, the large... That sounded like something dropping, didn't it? Oh, it Only no. six screws. Come on. Well, <laughs> fingers crossed none of them were in the box. <laughs> So, I mean, bearing in mind this has been through three countries already, I'd say it's pretty well packed. Um, I mean, that is about as all-in-one as it can get, I suppose. Oh, a couple of nozzles. So, first things first, it does look like... Just throw that on the ground. So, this is how the printer comes. So first things first, we have got the flexible cables that you've probably seen um, that you've probably seen on the artillery sidewinder and the artillery genius. Uh, so they've brought those over. We've got our little box of presumed goodies, which is a couple of spare. Um, so you've got a Z, a Z um, cable and an X cable in there. You've got two little square thingies got an american power cable because it came from america we have got all the little bags of screws so whatever i dropped wasn't that got a couple of extra nozzles it is clearly a uh, volcano hot end and that doesn't even look like a titan to me that looks more like the bit qh2 is it really so their design is a little bit different than the whole, but I will say without taking it apart and actually breaking it down, it probably is a well-designed like the H2. We've got our spool holder here. 
which does not lock. Yes, it does. Okay, rotate it a little bit more. You can keep rotating it. Yeah, you just rotate it there and it stays in. What's wrong with that? Okay. Just tiny. <laughs> we have, right. So this is a message to all of my 3D printer friends. When you're sending out a printer, there's a good chance that my printer may be more than 12 inches away from my PC at any one time. Please include either a proper length of um, USB cable or don't include it. I don't, I don't care if you don't include this because I personally don't ever use it. But if you're going to include it, make it useful. Went over on that. We have got quite a nice USB stick, which is an, a micro SD card uh, reader. I quite like that. Once again, we have a company that has a micro SD card slot on it, so they give you a micro SD card. Isn't that a fun little feature, rather than a micro SD card and a big SD card adapter? Got the obligatory spanners and Dubri what's it? You're back. Yeah, I literally just had a delivery from Amazon of batteries. <laughs> Excellent. The accessory box is now empty. We get a little, what, like 250 gram spool of filament. Give or take. Uh, which I think is their own brand filament as well. You get an all right little scraper. Pair of clippies. All the standard stuff. So without further ado, let's get some of this polyurethane off. Whilst we're here, should we, um, one second. I think it's a total of like seven screws underneath. Right, okay. So, I, whilst we're here, as we've all got nothing but time, let's have these screws off. I don't even know if you actually need to take the screws off for the feet or whether it's just going to be these two middle ones. So, let's find out. Yep, it's all the screws. <laughs> I wasn't sure, but it is. So they did oh, give you tiny, tiny keys, which is uh, really nice for people with tiny hands. Babies, if you get babies to work on your printers. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you can. Yes, guys, please don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We're at 2,500 subscribers now, which is just amazing that you guys have how the community's reacted to the videos and things like that right so we are looking at generic passively called uh, power supply mm. and a mks robin nano version 1.2 so more and more machines now you're seeing um, with uh, you're seeing with MKS Robin 1.2s. They're reliable boards. They are expandable. These are 2208 stepper drivers that are in here. Um, they are removable. There's lots of other stuff you can do with this. I'm pretty sure on a Nano you can fit a BL Touch, although don't quote me on that. Because if you can, I can't see where the power out is. But anyway, so let's put that back on and hope we didn't break anything. Which, who knows? So the only thing that bothers me about that, if anything, is just that that power supply is passively cooled. There's no active yeah. fan on the, uh, on the power supply, which does mean this is going to be crazy quiet. Um, did you go ahead and switch it over whilst you were in there? Did you switch it over while you were in there? Well, I'll just unscrew this then, shall I? Yeah. <laughs> so again, guys, because this has obviously come over from the... Uh, hey, George's Gaming Guide. Because this has come over from the US, that means that we are on the one... Oh, maybe I won't then. Where's the... 
should be the other side, but it's very hard to get into. Oh, oh well, that's rude. Oh, okay, we got you. No, that's okay. We can actually do it from the outside. We have to do it from okay. the outside. There's no way to do it from the inside. Now, it's not labeled, so... It's safe to assume that as this is sold in the US, it must be currently on 110. Because it came with the US power plug. We use real electricity in the UK. Very true, Carl. We use the power plug. I got into an argument with somebody over that. <laughs> I was like, walking down. They were like, there's no way they got more power over there than we do. And I'm like, actually, they do. Yeah, and we don't get yes, power cuts either. I remember, uh, I remember having that conversation over a over a chat with uh, with a couple of your uh, family members. That was quite funny. Yeah. Right. Let's just get these back on. So shipping wise, this is actually quite nice and restricted. Um, there's not there's not going to be too much movement of anything. Everything's zip tied down. So. Um, you can see it currently in its foldable state. Hi, Ben Stanley. You can see it currently in its folded state, which... Fine, whatever. <laughs> well, that, that's another one of my concerns and stuff like that is more the fact that as you open the bottom, you saw within the bottom that the two screws on both sides holding the Zs um, they're only screwing into the sheet metal. So if you plan on unscrewing this unit and re-screwing this unit back in, do not strip those bolts. Yeah. Oh, well, that's stuck down now. There we go. Oh, it's so sticky. Oh, it's so sticky. Right. Where's me clippers? So, click that. Clip. Clip that. So, interestingly, Daniel, as you pointed out earlier, the um, the Z axis has a little uh, has a little daughter board on it that obviously all of these Z flat ribbon cables plug into. Um, and it's worth noting that that um, is sitting right behind the Z, the Z motor, right. which I'll not lie, is not the best placement for that. That being said, I suppose, if it, especially with it being dual Z, the Z motors aren't working that hard. Agreed. So they shouldn't, they shouldn't get that hot. So we've got screws that go in here i see what you mean daniel about them just going into uh just going into sheet metal that's not um that's not awesome really depends on how much i mean oh, i say that but that's wow. actually pretty but they crank in decently enough So Carl's saying that he's getting his uh, CR10 smart tomorrow. Oh, okay. Out of interest, Carl, what made you go for that? I've, I've sort of I've seen them, and I just didn't think they were... I don't know, I just didn't think they were that interesting. Maybe I'm wrong. It was probably the Ferrari design hot end. The what? What? Sorry? The Ferrari oh, <laughs> <laughs> answers that question then. Right, so just so I'm clear, four screws, and this appears to be done. Well, it's a little bit quicker than the uh, the Homer. Yeah. So we, we plug in the cables. And Ben's looking at the Viper. So I have to say, Ben, um, you should jump over to not right this second, obviously, because you carry on watching us. But uh, but once you once we're done, you should jump over to um, Sam Prentice oh. and take oh, a look oh. at his review of the Viper. It's... How long the printer? 
he yeah he won the he won the the CR10 Smart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh right, before we go anywhere. Oh god, that's right in there, isn't it? Yeah. Might want to get I'm a flashlight. It's all right. I have eyes like a bat. Oh, that's really far in there. Uh, have I got anything longer? Hold on. I just need to see if I've got something long enough to... There we go. That looks like it is. There we go. Tick over. It made a click. All right. So, let's move that out of the way. Power supply is over here. Huh? So this is ticking, I'm not going to lie, a lot of boxes. It's direct drive, it's silent stepper motors, it's 32-bit main board. It's foldable. It's fo <laughs> I want to be clear that if you want to remove four bolts, every printer is foldable. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't do the rotation and stay there, but you could just take off the four bolts. Who needs that feature? Who is asking for it? It's There's like a market it's like the new series of Max where they've just gone. Oh, everyone wanted these Max in different colors, didn't they? Yeah, let's do that. And then they released them, and everyone went, "No, I didn't want that." That wasn't something that I asked for, and they're not even the colour that I like. So it does, look, it does look a bit like a Corby trouser press when it's folded down. <laughs> so okay, so then we've got a Martin couple says more. it looks like a cloth press when folded. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, guess so. Which, I, was, I mean, <laughs> Martin, I you might be showing your age a little bit there, knowing what a cloth press is. I should imagine. <laughs> I should imagine most people on the stream have absolutely no idea. So, George Michaels, George Michaels Johnson, uh, yes, currently they have, um, they have $45 off on the Amazon link right now, and there's a coupon for an extra $25 <coughs> off. So right now, there's $70 off at the $254 price tag, which... Right. For this machine, that's an astonishing price. This has got more features, many more features, than an Ender 3 V2. And an Ender 3 V2 is what? 260? I, I believe so. Um, but there's also one more kicker. If you do order this printer and you mention Honey Badger, what do you get, James? You get a free spool of filaments because we're famous people now, and just knowing us gets you stuff. That is true. So if you guys, if anybody does order one, just message me, and I will get. Uh, I'll uh, just message me your order number from Amazon. Um, if you go to our uh, our YouTube uh, our YouTube about page, then our, uh, our our email address is on there but I will grab it for you guys as well. So as I say, this should be, he said, quietly hoping. Uh, oh, Carl, I wish we could throw in a UK plug. Yeah, we can't throw in a UK plug. <laughs> and it is $137 in shipping to get it shipped to the UK. But theoretically, they will ship it to the UK. So if you want to pay quite considerably more than everybody else, then <laughs> one second bottle of starch with it i mean you could don't know how much good that would do you but you could if we're friends do we get more i mean you get to talk to us offline so that's our email address uh, definitely uh, hit us up with um, with your with your Amazon order number, and I tell you what, if you order one 
and you get the filament, you can also send us your address and I'll send you some stickers. There because we we're go. all adults here and stickers impress adults. So you will put lipstick on beforehand and kiss. Well, I'm not going to do that. Oh. Okay, let's turn that off. A little bit of packaging has got stuck in the... Uh, there we go. A little bit of packaging stuck in the fan there. That was why that noise was. Try again. So, Martin saying Indeed. that it's available in Germany as of the 2nd of July. Awesome. So. That's really good. Stickers! <laughs> Everybody <laughs> likes stickers. If there's a reason to spend over $200 on a printer, it's stickers. <laughs> it is. So, stickers. okay. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. Oh, there we go. And you can see we've got all of the, uh, we've got a bunch of, it's a custom UI that they've done. You've got your regular tools, your preheats, your extrusions, all the filament You're stuff. Right, Leveling. Hey, Jerry. Leveling, I'm going to go out and let me assume, is... I can't believe that was literally four bolts. Six, if six you want to count. If you include the uh, six, if you include the two for the spool holder. If you buy, if you buy two, Martin, we'll send you four stickers. Very true. Yeah. If you buy double, if you buy two, I'll send you six stickers. And no, a T-shirt. I'll send you five stickers. And a T-shirt. <laughs> And a t-shirt. The there you go. I'll even I'll even send you a t-shirt, Martin. And it won't be one that me or Mike has worn because it's so hot right now that these this are basically part now. of us. Yeah. This one is just skin. Yeah. I've just painted my body white. Maybe I should zoom out of that because that's now completely useless. Hold on. So this is homing at the moment. He said, immediately pushing his camera out of focus. There we go. So, point one. I'll tell you what, that's not far off a level. We're right out of the box, which is <laughs> incredibly impressive. So, it is a volcano hot end. And as, uh, as we said before, it's obviously, it looks very similar. Um, do you have an example? Well, I do have examples as it goes, but not yeah, on it's me. Yeah, thicker. Well, have you got one? Oh, hold on, let me, put you, let me make you big. There you go. Honey Badger stickers. Honey Badger stickers. So, three. My greasy fingers all over this screen already. So, it's assisted levelling, but obviously it's not, um, it's not auto bed levelling. Something like the Viper. Um, would definitely uh would definitely is i mean it is it is auto leveling it's also worth noting that even the introductory price on the viper is what like a hundred dollars more than this daniel i can't remember how much the viper is uh i believe the viper is coming in at the discounted price at 299 but that's not going to be the actual price i think they're actually going to push it over the 350 mark um, right well i'm going to call that level and just in the interest of being fair, we're going to do the sample print with their filament. So, let's oh, it's go. Two nine nine for the first two thousand. Preheat. So, Daniel, do you remember you said earlier that you can only go up in tens? Let's see it. All right, this button here. You just touch that, and now it does. Now it goes up in five, well, and then it goes up sense. in one. Of course, it does. Why is it shaped like a thermometer? <laughs> because it's a thermometer. <laughs> <sighs> All right, we'll put that up to two hundred, so that we can. I think you need to put the SD card in first. Yeah, but I need to. Uh, install the filament first. So, is there a filament runout sensor? No. No. Okay. 
well, that's one thing it doesn't have. But then you've got to be willing to make some sort of sacrifices. At the same notion, like an easy mod for the machine, as you can see with how the hot end is sitting up on that top screw, putting an optical filament sensor right at the top, kind of like your <laughs> Persia, it would easily just sit right on top. Now getting yeah. it to run a line. I want everything I buy to be foldable. Knives, lawnmowers, <laughs> grills, and shoes. <laughs> when I read that first of all, I didn't read grills, I read girls. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's go back. Filaments. Pop that right in the top. Oh no, you've got to take it off. No, you don't. Goes in there. <laughs> Dip shit. Load. It's just getting us up to 200 degrees. And then we're about to see how easy this is to load. Just make sure you put it in the right hole. I did actually just try to push it through a... Um, <laughs> I did actually... Uh, Mum won't I'm let me say, order I'm two. <laughs> If anyone orders one of these printers while this live stream's on, I'll send you a T-shirt. There we go. Look at that. Anybody ordering a T-shirt? Sorry, anybody ordering... Well, basically, you're just paying for a very expensive T-shirt and you get a free printer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, that is the... Uh, how big's the build volume? So, it's 235-235-250, which is almost... Definitely a middle finger to uh, to to Creality by being slightly bigger than <laughs> than a Creality machine would be. One second, I shall just put the SD card in the right way. Nice. Yep. Confirm. Call. Right back. Printing. These are library systems. These are quality t shirts, Carl. Like, super expensive. Test model. Confirm. So, test model comes up on the screen as a, uh, as a picture. So, does that, but what you're saying is, is that you need to download something else to actually. So all the files would have preloaded on there. It's pro uh, loaded with the file picture. So you need to download right. the MKS okay. base and then load them in there like that. Um, it's right. really I nice. Guess, yeah. I mean, to be truly honest, like, again, their library system is really nice. The whole UI seems to be on very high end. Well, correct me if I'm uh, wrong. So basically, perfect. because this is on a Robin, it's just an MKS TFT. Correct. Hi, chat people. <laughs> there we go. Let's just show that. There we go. Jerry's saying hi to everybody. So I'm not going to lie, guys. This is ticking an awful lot of boxes for me. So I'm a big fan of direct drive. Um, this, as I say, bear in mind this is based, or the, the extruder appears to be based off of a H2, uh, one of the big Q ones. That means that it's considerably lighter than a Titan or a BMG which means you lose that uh, disadvantage of inertia, which you get with, with, with heavier hot ends. Um, it's got pretty good part cooling from the look of it. That part cooling fan at the front seems to be, seems to be pretty well aligned. Um, Daniel, you were mentioning that yours tends to, has got sort of, so the, the heating fan you're saying is hitting the, so yeah, so my fan, and I'm pretty sure it's all fans, like whatever fan they decided to use on the left side of that unit is a really, really nice fan. So my fan is blowing so hard that it's actually looping around up underneath my actual print, and it was causing a wall. bit of curling. Yeah. Okay. I was just, so for anyone wondering why I was putting a plastic bag next to it, I was just trying to see where the where the draft was so at the moment i'm getting draft from the front which they've exhausted through a heat sink but
yeah guys don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe obviously we love you guys watching us we're doing as many live streams as we can the, the videos are coming thick and fast at the moment and we have lots of content coming we actually so made a we, list yesterday and it's, it's crazy yeah we've got so if we go by the list without the tct show that we're going to looks yellow on the big camera and lime on the small camera does it a wee bit Oh, okay. It's yellow. Non-stick. Don't know why it looks weird, but yeah, it's yellow. Which, bearing in mind everything else on the printer is black, does seem like a bit of an odd stylistic choice. Martin, make sure you email us your um, make sure you email us your order number from Amazon, and email us your address. I'll put our email address in the chat again. Uh, we will get you out a T-shirt, and we'll make sure that you get uh, your spool of filament as well. I will get that over to uh, I'll get that over to the Fuku guys, and uh, and they'll they'll sort that out for us. So let's just have a look and see how well my Pretty much eyeballing this went. That intense stare. It's like a sniper stare, isn't it? <sighs> so I will say. <laughs> oh, I've done that very well. <laughs> So I will say, don't freak out on the original oh, files the because way. whatever. So raft George they Michael's use, member is—is is there a proven Prusa slicer profile, or is it another DIY hope and heave to get a decent part? So it's—it's it's a valid question. Functionally, this is not really any different to a um, to a genius by artillery. Um, I would hazard to say start with them and um, start with start with their stock profile and then go from there. Um, I mean, this is putting those first few layers down quite nicely, I have to say. Just a little bit of adjustment on the wheels there. Can I reserve it? I'm not sure, Carl, to be honest. Not released yet, Carl. Uh, enters Germany, Amazon on the 2nd of July. Martin, make sure when you email us, tell us what size T-shirt you want. Yeah, definitely tell us what size T-shirt you want. Otherwise, we're going to guess. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing whatever we guess would be offensive. <laughs> if you get a 5XL, it fits everyone. Well, that's not ideal, is it? Not at all. You can go ahead and shut what that. What are you doing, you madman? Right, we're going to stop that. So I don't know if anyone can see the insanity that has just ensued with that print, <laughs> but it did like a. It did like a. So let me just push this forwards. So it did like a. The beginnings of a raft, I guess, which isn't centre, I'll point out. Um, and then it went absolutely spare, and it just uh, it just started <laughs> trying to print at the front of the bed and at the back of the bed. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that G code is not great. So why don't we slice something on the genius profile? <laughs> See how we do instead. Right, pop that in. So, just so that you guys don't feel left out, I will. Oh, can I not share my cura? That's rude. Okay, well, I won't share my cura because apparently I can't. So. No, it's it's confidential information. Apparently, yeah. Uh, right, back up, 3D printing. 
just going to stick a calibration cube on. Just do a skirt on there. We'll do that at a one. Right, cool. Let's just have a look and see what's on that drive. G code preview plugin installation guide. Oh, okay. So there is actually a thing you can install from their on their thing that tells you. Yes. That tells you how. So what was I doing then? Because I feel like I was. Oh, just test model G. -co oh, okay. Maybe I wasn't actually printing a model. Okay. That may have been my fault. Maybe that wasn't trying to actually print a cube. <laughs> I think maybe that was just supposed to test that the uh, that the visualizer was working. Oh, Jesus, what were the chances of me getting that right? Well done, me. Right. Okay, so calibration cube. Let's try that again, shall we? Ooh. Oh, no, it's just an F. That's boring. <laughs> I thought it. I thought it had done it. All. I thought it had like. Uh... I was telling you about the G code. Was he? Oh, was I you was. telling me what the G code was wrong? I was, but I, I just wanted to see it go. <laughs> oh, for God's <laughs> sake, man! <laughs> well, that means Fine. you sat there waiting for that to happen. <laughs> Balls. But their library system is really nice on the actual TFT. So hold on. One of Daniel's many children. <laughs> that would teach me for not listening. No, that was an actual human. That wasn't like a child. Right, well, it's we're just hating so that I can actually print a real model. It's like when you sit down and you're trying to do something for a minute and like everybody wants like something. I make a point of being woefully unreliable in my house so no one ever tries and asks me to do anything. It's perfectly fine. So I put my phone on silent. Um, so you'll get that F every single time if you don't upload the STL with the file format. Right, okay. It does heat pretty quickly though. Yes. So the bed stayed at temperature pretty nicely, although I will point out it's not an AC heated bed. Um, hot ends nice and quick to heat. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This is a tidy machine. This is, this is, you know, nice and easy to load, a good extruder. I would say I'm not really loving the bed strain relief because it's just kind of got a couple of extra bolts on the back. But yeah. that's not to say that that's, you know, that's that's not necessarily to say that that's actually um, not going to work. Just pull that down just a touch. And then the only other issue I have with it is the tiny, tiny adjustment wheels up underneath the bed. Like, make them a little bit bigger to where I can actually put my... Yeah, fingers. I get what you mean. Yeah, I, lo I love that, Chucky, Cole. It's one of my favourites. Well, you say it's one of your favourites. <laughs> I seem to recall specifically that you hated every minute. Of... I didn't say it's my favourite to paint. I said it's one of my favourites. Now it's done. <laughs> So go ahead, shut it off, and re-plug in your ribbon cables. Your ribbon cables might be off. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I'm not really fond of ribbon cables, because they look like they're in properly, 
but you might have one pin what's not connecting properly. Yeah, when I first done that, Carl, I used to um, wait until she's got to sleep, then I just just go in the bedroom, put that Chucky on her bedside table facing her, then just get in bed and go to sleep. <laughs> she had a, a lot of things to say about that in the mornings when she woke up. Let's try that again, shall we? You don't have the benchy on there. Um, I've sliced something myself, haven't I? There's you no should. reason why, and even if even if I was using one of theirs, there's no reason why it would print part of the first layer and then just go insane. Bananas. Cool, that's a fun noise. I'm surprised she never actually ever just hit me over the head with it, to be honest. Alright, so that means that definitely isn't in the right pins. Correct. And that's something that I brought up with them, is like, I, I noticed that yours were plugged in as well, but they should not be plugged in until it actually hits the end user. Just in a hypothetical situation, you know, you unbox the unit and you think that it's all 90% assembled, but in actuality, one of those could come out in transit. Yeah, so this one and this one weren't actually plugged in in my... Um, okay. Weren't, weren't, weren't plugged in on mine, um, but my Z-axis was all the way at the top. Well, your Z has to be pulled all the way to the top to make it foldable. Right. Okay. That makes sense. And then that leads into duration of the spool holder. The spool holder would actually physically have to come off if you are going to fold this and put it into a cubby. I want to be really clear. I don't think there's anybody folding this damn thing. If I had that printer, I would fold it up every time I finish the print. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. I can't even get you to throw the plastic from your supports in your actual bin 90% of the time. I don't time. know. I've got a great... The chances of you folding something up, negligent. Not I've happening. Got great, I've got a great bin there. Just Are you going to into the detail shiny pile? sticker says. Pardon? When when you're going to these files real quick, are you going into the G code file? Well, I've just done my um ow balls. Very oh, hard. that's your slice. That's my. This is my slice. Yeah. Okay. Let's try that again, shall we? Ah, oh, the joys of doing things live. It's the only way to do them. It shows the truth. Okay, so now we need to... So I'm not sure what threw that level way out, but it was. Right, doing the skirt. Let's see what it does. Well, it's actually printing now, so it must have been that that. Um, so there won't be a briefcase testing then. No, there absolutely won't be. I want to be so clear about this. You go to the moon bag. Just doesn't need to fold that much. It does. I would just make a make a point of folding mine every day. I don't I know. Do it's enough. in a bed set, I guess. Well, no, it isn't. When you need to use this machine, it has to be unfolded. 
Therefore, you have to have the space for it to print. Bearing in mind that printing just this cube, which I want to point out is useless to anybody, is like a 40-minute print. Most useful things are like 8 to 10 hours. If something can be out for 8 to 10 hours, then it could be out all the time. Well, you got to look at it in a classroom aspect. So in a hypothetical yeah. situation, if you had a classroom setting and let's say you had multiple classroom settings, this would be ideal for them because then they would be able to put them all the way in a closet instead of having them all stacked on top of each other. And you would trust a group of children to set up multiple folded printers. For a class. Yeah, no, never mind. If you want a, if you want something for a classroom, we did um, we did a video on a couple of the smaller flash forges, right? Where they are completely enclosed. They actually don't have heated beds for the most part, but they're cheap, they're colourful, and because they have doors on them and they're completely enclosed, you can keep dirty little children fingers away from all the hot parts this is just asking for a tired child to tangle something about his person upon it how my finger exactly the last right. thing you want is to be teaching secondary school students and for the three pubic hairs that they've grown over the last decade to just be completely ripped out by this machine So whilst it's ready, do your favor and check those uh, top bears. Lay it on the floor to your bed to storage. It would be easier and more practical to have a fold-away bed. A Murphy than bed. Than it would be yeah. to have a fold-away printer. <laughs> Look, I'm not, I'm not knocking. No, I am knocking the concept. It's ridiculous. Well, I, I'm not knocking the printer. The printer has a lot of really good features the dual z 32-bit mainboard easy to set up it's got a glass it's got one of the um ultra base glass beds it's direct drive good part cooling aesthetically it's very nice it's got a touch screen it's got it's got all the things that you want um it has got belt tensioners on the on the y and the x as well like it's a solid machine i am not debating that in the slightest Good machine, I like it. Thumbs up. I don't care that it's foldable. No one does. I do. Just like no one bought the Big QB1 because it was pink. Hey, I almost bought one. Yeah, you bought one because it's a good printer. <laughs> Nothing to do with it being pink. I will agree with that, Carl. And I will agree, somebody will find a reason to have a foldable printer if they're packing it yeah, up. And, and to be to fair, yeah, we had the same conversation a while ago about there was there was a printer being advertised um, and it was a food printer. And it was printing with edible inks that literally printed onto cupcakes and to yeah, like fun. coffee foam and things funny. like that. And it looked like you were just asking for lupus. Like, if there is a way to spread herpes, it's eating whatever was coming out of that machine. I would like to see because it's I still have yet to put it on there. <laughs> what, just to see whether or not it would work? Sales yeah. and carry on. Yeah, and, and you know what? It is a, it's a, it's a printer that they decided they want to have something that stands out from the crowd. Foldable, all right, you know, no one really, no one really asked for the feature. No one really cared. No one really cares. Um, I know that there were a couple of kits that came out to make foldable Ender threes, and there's a massive reason why you don't see a lot of people with foldable Ender threes. It was garbage. It had like really heavy. Um, I get the printer after you finish, right, Matt? Unfortunately, it's not a um, it's not a G Tech, so you just you just I don't think you'd know how it works. I don't think you'd be able to understand all the extra knobs. This one doesn't spontaneously catch fire, so I don't think it's going to be something that you're really going to want. 
the ideal if you're going on UK holidays. That is that is true. Like if you, you had to go visit your mother in law you really don't like and you want to put yourself in a nice little room, you can take it with you. Right. I'd be more inclined to take a chainsaw. Chainsaw? Yeah. Oh. And it's done it again. Was happily printing and now it's gone screwed. So why is it doing that? It's got to be a That's got to be a cable comms issue. Okay. Let's take that off the bed. Because that was printing. Lovely. Check the and one behind the scene. Okay, I'm going to have to take that cap off. This one was plugged in shotgun barrels bars to hold my clothes hanger on foldable doors we also need foldable bridges not a drawbridge but a bridge with a beams fold <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah all of those things george they're all the things that i want don't forget oh, fold. That's not movable, then. so to not make you sit there and have to download the actual slicer. I actually already have it downloaded. Do you want a raft around it? One second, I just need to go and get my screwdrivers. Run, Forrest. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh. Now we don't film in his conservatory. You can't there. see him doing his funny run down the garden. Oh, okay. That's how you read the comments. That's pretty cool. So I haven't used StreamYard in a while, so bear so with you me. So you I didn't click on the comments. File in there. <laughs> I don't think you can send a file over StreamYard, can you? I don't think so, no. I have returns. If it's only small, you should be able to just drop it in Messenger. Yeah, that's what What's I'm doing that? right now. Oh, okay, so the... Um, so I have actually here, look, where is that? There we go. So they actually run off of a cure based slicer. Um, so this one's printing at 40 millimeters per second. What I just sliced, uh, the one what's actually on my printer right now, uh, I have it sliced at 70 millimeters per second. Fish and chips, foldable <laughs> beer bottles. Okay. And then if all else fails and that ribbon is not the problem, then you might want to check the ribbon down on the motherboard itself. Oh, but inside, that again. inside Messenger, uh, you should have the cube with their slicer. Right. <clears throat> it can print at decent speed then. 
So to be fair, guys, I'm I'm currently printing at eighty millimeters a second. So it, it can it can print at a decent speed. Yeah. But if I mean again, this is something that I genuinely resent when it comes to um, and and it, and it confuses the hell out of me when it comes to companies designing their their new printers. I don't understand why, as a 3D printer company, you feel the need to make your own slicer. All you are doing is creating technical debt. You are, you are creating something else that you have to service. Now, I, I, I do not... Ah, oh, the dreaded live fail section. <laughs> so... At the end of the day, Martin, I'll be honest with you and say that I don't have a horse in this race. This isn't a printer that we've paid for. We haven't separated ourselves from any of our hard-earned pesos to, uh, to have it. It's a machine that we have to review. And if the machine isn't good, then we tell you. If the machine has something wrong with it, we tell you. Whether or not it's on live stream or not is irrelevant. If this was to have happened as part of the review, I'd have just brought it up then. Right. As so they are like saying that the max printing start, speed is 300 start. millimeters per second. So to be fair, George, um, George Michaels, gentlemen, um, that cable that's down here is clearly was, was plugged in through shipping. I didn't check it because I just thought it was plugged in. This one here actually has one of the, um, because it's a ribbon cable, it's got one of the lifting tabs that you, um, that you, you, put, you put in and then it locks in, the tab actually locks in this cable. There isn't a lock either on the side one here or on the back one here. So I should have checked to make sure that that was doing what it should have done. Um, we'll now see whether or not that was the issue or not. Because if it was, it's literally I should have just checked it. All right, let's see what that does. Going down nicely, so that's good. Could literally just be that that cable down the side came loose. Again, ribbon cables versus actual cables. I'll take my yeah, old cable. You know, the, the, the reality is, so as I say, this one up here has actually got a lock on it. Yeah. So once you put the thing in, you press that down, and it's fine. And it's going to stay. And it's going to stay. The one on the side and the one on the side of the tool head don't. Right. So my advice to them would be, if, they, if you can't secure them in shipping, don't plug them in. If it's, if it's not plugged in, then I know that I need to check it. Correct. But if it is... No. Right. Stop. Go ahead and pull the G-code I did send you and give a go on that one because that's using their slicer and everything. Right. Or maybe your power's just too adequate. Too much power. You don't reckon it is that? You don't reckon that it was on two two forty, and I've changed it to one ten? No, no you would. Yeah. You would have already blown it by now if that's the case. Yeah. One, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Before we go any further, then let's try your G code. 
Yes, non fam. A lock is necessary for any style of ribbon cable. And gosh forbid you get like a finger smudge on it or even much so, let's say, just the dust bunny. Yeah. You have the probability of, you know, that happening, so. All right. <sighs> Stuck your one on there. Let's see how this one does. Oh, Martin, don't. Don't. Don't mind the folding aspect. It's just something that James would never use. All of his printers are set up. He never has to take them down. He never takes his printers with them, so they feel left out being left at home. Good. They shouldn't be included in your everyday life. It's weird if you're taking your printer with you. Unless you're going to a 3D printing club. Oh, if you want to see the quality of the print, I mean, I've already had stuff printed. I mean, you got your Benchy right here. Um, I have the Pikachu, what was printed off of it. Oh, I actually um, printed a cylinder screen, just to see how the cylinder would print. Got to figure out where my thing is. Um, James? What's that, Mike? Daniel. Mike Daniel Bigger on the screen. Oh, right. Sorry. I mean, I, I was happy being in the small section. Um, so your bench is right here. Um, that was just my first test print. Then I went ahead and printed a cylinder to see how the Z seam was going to hit and actually did really good. Um, right now on the printer itself, where is it at? That's actually a Goku model to see how it's taking with the tree aspects. Um, she's been printing now for about two hours. Um, she's printing really well. Um, sometimes I don't even notice that it's even printing because it is kind of quiet. I think the yeah. loudest part on there is really just the fans. To be truly honest, that besides that, it's just it's it's been pushing away at it. Um, as you can see in the background of that image right there, there's a little tiny printer in the corner where that one can just go in the trash can, but that's a personal opinion. All right, let's see what this does then. It's actually right there. Oh, right, sorry. Thank you. Uh, this one was coming in at 27 minutes. Okay. Just out of interest, is this a calibration cube? Yeah. Yeah, you left supports on, didn't you? I did not, did I? Did you? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Calibration cube with supports then, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the pinnacle of professionalism. Yep. Well, you got to think they're using a branch of the Cura and no. my Cura. Everything's already set up and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll right. use so I knew it was. I didn't think it was going to be that Cura, but um, yeah. it isn't. So we're going to have to um, open up the bottom and take a look and see if anything has come loose there. So let's take you off for the moment. <laughs> Sweet. Right. Oh, uh, don't lie. You know, you put it back in the cart because you really want that t shirt. <laughs> All right. Let's open her up. See whether or not. I'm 99% sure that when I opened it up earlier, I didn't touch anything that would have availed itself to uh, becoming loose but has he broken it already <laughs> no sam uh, it's just not 
It's just not prime It's just not It's not an any cubic. It's not going to break on the first day. <laughs> right. Let's take a little butchers on the inside. See what we're working with. See if we've got anything that's loose. So. No, solids, 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 nothing there, nothing there, uh, I'm not seeing anything that could be, uh, that could be loose, just make sure that my fan's working and everything. Yeah, fans blown in the right direction. Funny enough to answer your question, Sam, real quick. Actually, I'm not having a very good day. So I had a uh, company come by and uh, pull out a couple of my trees for no reason because they wanted to build a house. And they said that my leaves hung over their property line. So we were going to take your tree. That's how my morning's gone. Just out of curiosity, how big is your garden that you didn't notice people ripping trees out? Well, I mean, so we sit on just shy of an acre of land. Fair enough. And it, the, the way it was run is that we planted and they have like a one meter rule that when you plant your trees and plant everything, it has to be a meter from the property Fair line. Enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we fell within the guidelines of the meter problem was is that it was a big tree and it branched out and it went over the property line so they thought that it was on the property line one of those things so I say I've checked all the ribbon cables and it's definitely nothing from there. I can't yeah. see Carl, I can't yeah. see any cables that are loose on the inside. Isn't that why guns are allowed there? <laughs> we had this comment. <laughs> yeah, we had this conversation before we started. <laughs> I'm just gonna try your G code again. Did, did you check the Y as well? Yeah, so I've checked all the cables and I've checked the Y motor to make sure everything was connected and it's all, it all looks, all looks like it's where it's supposed to be. I'm not seeing anything that's, that's obvious. I mean, it, again, damage shipping, something could happen with those and ribbons. If this doesn't work, I would suggest actually switching out the ribbons in total. Did we just freeze? No, sorry, I'm just reading. Oh no, I I, I thought that we we froze because it looked like Mike fell asleep for a second. <laughs> right, we'll give this one more go. See whether or not something was maybe just a little bit loose in there. It's a shame, really, because I I mean everything else about the printer has got. <laughs> Has sort of has got a big tick in its box, you know. It's decent looking. It's got twenty. It's you know, science steppers, MKS Robin board, volcano hot end, a BQ H two clone. Black ribbon cables aren't necessarily a plus or a minus. They just are. So, George, it's, you know, it's a fair point. I mean, so Dan's printed right out of the box, didn't it? 
It did. It did. Uh, with, um, with no issues? Could I had be minor things, but I mean, my um, my bearings at the tops of the Zs uh, during shipping, I guess one of them became unscrewed. Um, and I had to fix that before I started printing. Uh, yeah, no, mine are all good there. Yeah, no, uh, when we watched the other one get unboxed as well, his were perfectly fine as well. Um, and then it was just, uh, what was it? Oh, it was the ribbon cable for me as well. The ribbon cable was not plugged in all the way. And my uh, first test print, it decided to go wonky like yours did. And then I realized it was the ribbon cable and was like, oh, okay, let me just plug this back in. I didn't even know you left non. <laughs> nice to see you're back. See what he it might have changed it by putting it through three countries is correct. Can you flash and reinstall the firmware? I mean, do you know what? It's possible I absolutely could, George. Um, I don't think the firmware comes on the, uh, on the stick as stock, but I'll definitely check it out once this is... Uh, done its thing whether or not it's uh whether or not it carries on or whether it goes screwy again no so let's take a look on the sd card oh could it be sd card i didn't could even think of SD that card? couldn't be that simple could it I've got May. a spare one here. Let's re-slice that. Save that to disk. That appears like a crappy SD card sort of fault. Don't even know what I don't know why I didn't think of that straight out of the gate. You should have spoke up, Mr. and Mrs. Diesel. <laughs> oh, well, this is impossible to get in without going around and looking, isn't it? Do you think it's perhaps because you haven't folded it down enough times? Do you think it's because I haven't folded it down enough, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. could definitely be that completely amazing feature that changes the game in 3D printing. It's a secret code, you know, you got to fold it, lift it, fold it, lift it, spin it around. Yeah. Perhaps first I've got to whip it and then I've got to nay nay straight afterwards. Very much so. Who knows? Let's see whether or not it's SD card. If it is, that's annoying. <laughs> Loopy Lou wants to know if it's folded up properly. Does she? Well, thank you, Loopy Lou. I believe it is correctly folded. Yes. Oh, that's what the little squarey bits are for. The little squarey bits go in the ends. There we go. The square bits. Okay. You pee on OnlyFans if you're going to whip it. Yeah, the little square bits, they go on the uh, their little end caps for the... Uh, for the aluminium extrusions. There you go. Maybe that's the next thing for 3D printing, getting an, getting a 3D printing only fans account. I would I would subscribe to you. Yeah, I think you might be the only one and if I'm just stripping for you, I think that feels a bit sad. I mean, if you only made videos every time you lost a screw, you would make a lot of videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be a millionaire by now. Oh, it was the missing bits. Do you know what? I don't even know what I think I heard. Oh, maybe it's that. Hold on. No, I've no idea what that is. 
uh, the big wrench. Right. Thought OnlyFans wasn't your thing, Calvin. <laughs> So besides that, I heard through a grapevine, one of our friends is going to be opening up an interview channel with uh, some 3D printers and uh, kind of looking forward to it because it's uh, kind of an all ages channel. So it aims towards the young bits, the little makers, as well as the elder makers. And I'm kind of excited to see their first video. So, George, it's a, it's a fair point, except for this one seems to do... Oh, it's hard to see on that. Hold on. Let's see if we can... So, this one... No, you can't really see because it's white. This one was... Um, this one was... It, got, it was printing the infill. It did. That was one that got the further... No, there we go. Right. Okay. So we know it's not the SD card. Let's take a look and see what they include on the stick. The just went back with a bit of speed, didn't it? Yes. It did. Uh, it went back a bit violently. Yeah. Machine accessories, resource models, software and driver, user manual, but no firmware. Okay. Well, we'll have one more check on the inside and just see whether or not there's anything else I've missed. But other than that, it's going to be a question back to Goofus and find out uh, Fogo. what the devil could be going on. So I'll open it up one more time just to see whether or not it's... We did get got... spare cables. Yeah, cables. I mean, we've got spare cables, but the thing is, is it's specifically moving backwards and forwards on the Y and the Y doesn't go through any of the um, ribbon cables because it's, just, it's, it's, it's literally see now the Y is glued into the stepper motor so it's not that none of the drivers are loose all the cables are glued in place so none of those have come loose during shipping I'm not seeing anything obvious on there. Can we can we give a go at the inside? So hold on. There we go. Right. Oh, Jesus Christ! That was nearly me kicking a camera over. Brilliant. Um, so there we go. So. All the 2208 drivers are in place. All of the ribbon, all of the um, stepper cables are glued in place. The Y, the y motor is not part of the ribbon cable right. assembly. It's just straight wired into the board. So it can't be that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, they, they gave us spare cables, so I can definitely try doing that. Did they give us all spare ca all the spare cables? Let's just have a It look. should be the two, is correct. Oh, so that's just the cover bit. All right, okay. Screw this back on then. And we'll try switching the ribbon cables out. Only on Honey Badger. Only on Honey Badger. Sam asks if you've tried speaking to it softly. I shall never speak to a printer softly. 
it shows it's weakness. It's it out because it's foldable. That's why. It's like, why should I work for you, you piece of shit? See, if you didn't talk about the foldable aspect like yeah. 20 times, like, maybe, if the fold, maybe if the foldable thing was, uh, I'd say, leave the bottom off. So the reason I'm not is because the feet are on it, and um, and I don't want to put this flat on the desk. Otherwise, your um, factory reset option. I'll have a quick look and see if there is a factory reset option. I didn't see one on the screen, but we'll see. Just looking to see if there are any. Um... No, there's nothing. Nothing in there about uh, about factory resets. So let's turn this off, and we will replace the jam and we'll replace line. the ribbon cables and see whether or not oh, saying that not sure how you get this one out there we go uh so you got the suggestion to jam a butter knife in it <laughs> what? <laughs> uh so mr and mrs diesel to be clear what i mean by not called is i mean that the power supply is passively called there is a cooler for um, for the uh, for the board itself. There just isn't a cooler for the actual power supply. See, Carl, I've already said um, I've already said that. I think if he was to fold it down and fold it back up, I think it would work. That's a nice little tool set, though, James. Where'd you pick that one up at? So that is just an Amazon job. It's actually a uh, phone repair kit. Okay. But it has all those random-sized uh, screwdriver bits that you just... That, they're just not the sort of thing that come in normal screwdriver sets. So it has all the sizes of Philips... Crosshead, flathead, star drive, Allen key, and it has some tiny, tiny, tiny little ones that would be for like a mobile phone up to bigger ones. So that's yeah. like your whole set of Allen keys plus everything else. And then, George, after uh, the ribbon cables get reset, we will jump into the actual to see if there's a factory reset option. If there is, I would imagine that that's going to require um, that that's going to require a firmware flash. To be honest, yeah, fold it back down. Then if it fails, I'd like to like to see it fold back down again, knock it on the floor, and let's have thirty minutes of James sobbing in the corner. It's a very legitimate point, and it may very well be happening. <laughs> At the minute, I think he's probably got going through his head. I wish it would just Fuku off. <laughs> All right. Pull you off. Pull you off. Now, it was nice of them to give us extra cables. I will admit um, on that. Yeah, I was hoping I was going to be able to get more than six minutes of use out of them, if I'm honest. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. Yeah, and it could have been one of those things in transit. Yeah. Problem is, is that with, with stuff like this, it does only take a knock or something to just... A nip right into the line. Yeah. Well, and before then... we started this room, we were talking about how nice it's going to be just to have to put four screws in compared to the last build he did. 
<laughs> that has not gone the way we intended it was gonna. That is true. But we do have one printing right now, so I mean there's that. Yeah. To be fair, the Homer was a much harder build, but you can't deny that it's currently printing. Like like it was an annoying build, but it's working at the moment. Now that's that mini board in the back, yeah? Right on the Z? Yeah, I'm just checking it. I was just checking it to make sure that everything was on nice and tightly. Nothing was short into the board or anything like that. So, George, um, I don't think there's an actual terminal in the machine itself. I could be wrong. I haven't dug that deep. I mean, I've just been straight printing for what now almost 72 hours with the machine. Can you use M500? Yeah, so you probably could do, George. I could uh, I could definitely, there we go. I could try plugging it in. And then we need to go. This has got like a really awkward Fold in the cable as well. Band, yeah. Yeah. No non stick. He's been printing with it for seventy two hours. Not just on that print. No, no, no. And be truly honest, Carl, I am not like James. And his builds are amazing. Look at the BLV cube right behind, you know, Mike's head. That's something James made from the ground up. Um, so when it comes to that, James is actually a little bit more uh, in tune with 3D printing than I. Um, on my printer right now, non-slick, is I believe a model of Goku. Um, I printed another one um, on resin. And the moment I finished printing it, somebody scooped it up and bought it. So I said, you know what? Might as well print another one. Um, it's a 14-hour <laughs> print. Uh, it looks to be at like 20, 25% complete. Not too sure. Don't uh, really want George, to my chair George, over said there. It's not, George said it's not Windows-based, so folding and unfolding won't work. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Right, plug that back in to there, like that. <clears throat> that is in, that is in. Uh, Martin did say the noise you heard drop at the beginning isn't something that came disconnected? No, it was like just i think it's just a packing tap and oh, where are we uh oh i've just kept that zoomed in haven't i that must be boring yeah. for everybody no actually <laughs> it was really good because we saw you putting on the ribbon cable so um, it was just a packing tab it wasn't anything important right god help me let's just make sure that we've yeah we've got everything on there all right we'll try one more time if this one doesn't work, guys, then we'll call the stream quits and uh, and we will revert back to Goku and uh, and see if we can get it working for our review. But that's all the belt. That's all the belts. I said belt. Sorry. That's all the ribbon cables changed. It's all the connections checked. Um, after that, 
it is going to be a case of either connecting it. If I do that, it will make me unlike the video. <laughs> so um, we'll wait and see if this works. If it does, great. If it doesn't, hold on, put that back towards the camera. Um, if it doesn't, then we'll end the stream and we'll have to revert back to Foku and see what uh, see what they say. We'll ask them for a copy of the firmware and then we'll flash it. Um, and see then if they know what we're that, that fixes it. And then you guys will just wait with bated breath for the review, unfortunately, to see if we can get it back up and running. Because so far, we've not even got calibration cube off of it. So the chances of us being able to do a review is pretty limited. <laughs> Sam says, best make room for it on the floor. <laughs> it's not a floor printer. Although we do have floor printers. We do, we do have floor printers, yes. What you can't see in there at the minute is there is two floor printers. Uh, actually, underneath here at the moment, there's three floor printers. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, two pushers and a longer. Oh, that looks grand. I think I might join you for one. It's turned into one of those streams, obviously. <laughs> the heating do we got heating music we need heating music it's just elevator music but louder and more aggressive like the dutch uh like the dutch death metal band who entered eurovision that one year yeah that would be nice james picks on me for my music taste every day I don't pick on you just for your music taste. You're what also your ginger music? and drive a Kia Toe. So, uh, oh. what is your, mu what is plenty your music? Of things, uh, it's plenty of things to pick on you about. What is your music taste? Oh, is it finished, oh, Sam? Sorry, go on. Lord, I, yeah. I would have to say it's across the whole spectrum. Um, give a go at Eskimo Cowboy. What the hell? Give a go at Eskimo Callboy. That obviously hasn't made its way over this side. You just have some yeah, sort no. of breakdown then, because it sounded like you said Eskimo Callboy. Yeah, that, that's the name of the band. Like a really cold slag. Pretty much. Right, I see. I'll listen to them every once in a while when I go for a run. Um, I was in a band Martin when says I was chariots 15. on fire. I was in a band when I was 15 called Areola Nip Tuck. Oh, nice. We were not good. <laughs> we really we really banked on the name carrying us a lot further than any sort of talent, and no one liked it. You also can't play an instrument, can you? Only my own. Huh? You're not very good at and that. It's amazing how often Anna on stage it doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> yeah, Anna told me you weren't very good at that either. All right, let's see what this does. Fresh ribbon cables, connections checked. I'm pretty sure I just lost like three friends to uh, what after Eskimo after Cowboys. You, after you admitted what music you listen to. <laughs> pretty sure they're like, yeah, no, we can't hang out with him anymore. Well, I didn't break anything because it homes and it heats. So that's a good start. It doesn't work less than before, which is, <laughs> which is always a plus when I try to do things. Well, thank you, Nonsley. That's just one of the little bits of music I listen to. Actually, that's my wife hates it because, like, when we get in the car and I'm with my kids and stuff like that, it's just nothing but Broadway music. Um, we're really into, like, the loud Aladdin soundtrack. That one's really good. <laughs> Very good, Daniel. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I know someone else who really likes the Aladdin soundtrack. No, it's like the Prince Ali song. It really speaks to me. Yeah. It speaks to a lot of people. So I've never liked it personally. <laughs> and plus, working at Disney, I mean, it does, you know, they, there's a lot of musical taste there. 
So. Yeah, man, it's now? the Y. It's the Y. The Y is either the Y stepper motor has, dry, has died or um, or the Y motor has died because just then it didn't even get past the purge line. That's what I'm saying. Like, what just happened there? Yeah, literally, literally tried to get past the purge line and nothing. So, okay, guys, I'm going to turn it off for now. And then uh, if... We get it. Uh, if we get it working, then obviously we'll uh, we'll post up the um, we'll post up the review in the next few days. Hopefully by the end of next week, and then uh, we will go from there. I may even put up a little short at some point of uh, of us just getting it working and a, a quick explanation on what exactly went wrong, why or it wasn't working, it how we got it, it working this time. What's that? Or just holding it down and putting it away. Or, yeah, or just shooting myself in the face, one of the two. Thanks very much for joining, guys. It's been lovely having you and lovely chatting. Very sorry that we didn't get this work in the way that we should have done, but it wasn't our fault, and if it was, it was Daniel's. So, uh, so <laughs> thanks very much for joining, guys. We've got lots more coming on the channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will speak to you all very soon. See you, guys. See you later.